Tonight, we spend some time on a subject gaining more attention in recent days because of Buttigieg, religion, and the gay community. Here's correspondent Doug McKelway. If he runs and if he's elected, South Bend, Indiana Democratic Mayor Pete Buttigieg would be the first openly gay president in history and the first candidate to say this about his husband. My marriage to Chaston has made me a better man. And yes, Mr. Vice President, it has moved me closer to God. Your quarrel, sir, is with my creator. The remarks at the LGBTQ Victory Fund brunch showed the prospective candidate is unwilling to cede the campaign issue of religious faith, something long claimed by social conservatives. But Buttigieg's invoking of the vice president reportedly angered Mr. Pence. I worked very closely uh, with Mayor Pete when I was governor of the state of Indiana. We had a great working relationship. And uh, uh, he said some things that are uh, critical of my Christian faith and, and, uh, and about me personally. And he, he knows better. He knows me. The second lady, Karen Pence, was more direct, reminding the 37-year-old Harvard grad of First Amendment protections. This young generation may not know the liberties and freedoms that are protected in the United States, and one of them is religious liberty. The skirmish occurs amidst a broader debate. The Democratic field sees vulnerabilities in a president who continues to enjoy the support of social conservatives, despite what some say are his own moral failings. Before you tell me about your religion, show it to me and how you treat other people. While Democrats may be trying to redefine faith in politics, some on the right are trying to reclaim it. Several conservative Catholic websites this week published a 6,000-word letter from former Pope Benedict that blames the church's pedophilia scandal on the sexual revolution of the 1960s. But the former Pope goes beyond blaming just the 60s counterculture. He wrote, ultimately, the reason is the absence of God. Brett? Doug, thank you.